As you walk through the 40 kilometer trail system of the Dundas Valley Conservation Area following sections of the Bruce Trail, you may come across this crumbling structure, which somewhat resembles the facade of a stone mansion. This is in fact the ruins of the Hermitage, a once grand residence home to Ancaster's first reverend, to English and Greek immigrants, and to supposedly the paranormal. The Hermitage sits in the Dundas Valley in the town of Ancaster, a region of the city of Hamilton, home to over 200 waterfalls. The Hermitage House in particular is nestled in a valley near the waterfall now known as the Hermitage Cascade. This Cascade waterfall flows adjacent to what was the gatehouse. The Hermitage House was originally built in 1830 by the Reverend George Sheed, who was Ancaster's first Presbyterian Reverend. Sheed died in 1832 and his home was sold to Otto Ives. Ives was an Englishman who came to Canada with his Greek wife and family. In 1855, the Hermitage was acquired by Scottish immigrant George Gordon Brown Lee. Leith was the second son to Major General Sir George Alexander Lee. As the second son, George could not inherit his family's property in Scotland, so he was given a pension and sent to Canada, where he purchased the Hermitage and surrounding 250 acres of land. He embarked on a series of extensions, bringing the house to its impressive size and grandeur. The home was said to have been opulent even by today's standards. The Leith family had numerous servants, a successful farm, newly constructed wings, and popularity in the county. After Mr. and Mrs. Leith's death, their daughter Alma inherited the hermitage in the 1900s. These ruins are all that remain of the once grand hermitage, as a fire devastated the mansion in October 1934, leaving nothing but a few scattered family valuables and the remnants of these outer stone walls. Though the mansion was brought to ruin, it is said that a presence from the past remains. The legend of the ghost of William Black is a local ghost story associated with the hermitage dating back to the time of Otto Ives. When Otto Ives and his wife Magdalene came to Canada and purchased the hermitage, they brought her niece with them to act as a companion for Mrs. Ives. Mr. Ives hired a coachman named William Black. The legend goes that Black fell in love with the niece of Mrs. Ives, and the two would often sneak off into the surrounding woods together. After hiding their love for some time, Black went to Otto Ives and asked for his niece's hand in marriage. Ives was very upset by this proposal, as the marriage would have been a disgrace to the Ives family. The next morning, Ives and his wife were to go out for the day, so they waited at the front door of the hermitage, but the coachman was not at the front door, as planned. Ives went out to the gatehouse to scold the coachman for his lateness. As Otto entered the gatehouse, he discovered Black's body dangling from the rafters. At this time, a suicide could not be buried in a churchyard, so Ives buried Black at the crossroads where the current street called Lover's Lane meets Sulphur Springs Road. On a moonlit night, some say that Black's ghost can still be heard crying out for his lost love, and many visitors to the Hermitage claim to have seen Black wandering the surrounding forest. These are the ruins as they stand today. The ruins are experiencing some much needed attention from the Hamilton Conservation Authority after years of degradation. A $460,000 restoration project began in July 2015 and is scheduled to be completed by the summer of 2016. This project involves months of disassembling, cataloging, stabilizing, and then reassembling the 160-year-old fire-destroyed mansion. Significant elements of this project include a complete and accurate rebuild of the main front wall and two side walls. This will allow the structure to have no visible external supports and can be safely visited by the public. If all goes according to plan, the ruins will be built into ruins, keeping the history and integrity of the hermitage alive for future generations and for spirits of the past.